and I hope you started to think about Halloween. It's just around the corner, but I have lots of good ideas today. So if um, our Facebook Live is functioning, is it functioning? It's working. Oh, good. Um, I just finished, and I'm sorry I finished already, but I finished a beautiful Indian corn wreath that I'm going to hang right next to my back door. That's where the kids come for trick-or-treats. And um, this is uh, a wreath form you can see on the back. The Indian corn, all of which I grew in my own garden. Look at these beautiful colors. They're amazing this year. I have such a variety. Uh, and you never know what you're going to get. You plant a green kernel of corn and you get a blue kernel of corn. Uh, all of these are just extraordinary. And uh, I have more over there, baskets of it. But just uh, use the corn cobs and the corn husks and use a hot glue gun, some um, about, I think it's about 26 gauge copper wire uh, to wire right onto the um, frame. And you can put a bow on here if you like. I don't think it even needs a bow. I think it's gonna look really great hung up on the wall, don't you? It's really pretty. So that's, we already have a quick question. Oh, okay. Sanaz wants to know, how do you get them so colorful? Well, these are the seeds that I have been using year after year. I grow the corn, we just take the seeds off the, off the cob, and we plant them next year. So I've been getting a lot of odd uh, colors. This is more typical of what you might get as Indian corn if you buy the seed. But these new uh, colors, look at this one. This has so many extraordinary colors, and this one really almost like jewels. And then a yellow, look, so pretty. Now you can just cluster them together like this too and hang a cluster on your door as a, as a kind of wreath too. It'd be pretty and so as a welcoming sign. When you're using a hot glue gun, I just wanna always give my little lessons. Uh, this is a little wax stick, hot glue. Always keep a bowl of iced water so that when you get some glue on your finger, you stick your finger right in the iced water. That way you do not get burned. Do not put the wax on your finger in your mouth because then you'll have a burn here and you'll have a burn here. <laughs> Word of caution. And don't let kids do this. Um, not we have a question. What's the best way to dry them, the corn? Oh, I just let them dry right in the garden on the stalk. And then we harvest them. Then we take them up to the house and we pull back the pull back the husks, as you see, and tie them with a little piece of twine, like and, that. And are they edible? Uh, you could probably do something. Maybe you can make some masa out of them. Uh, if you have a mano y matate, you know, those corn grinders. Uh, I haven't really eaten my own, my own decorative corn. I use this for decoration. And I do grow lots of good edible corn, though, which I don't bother, bother uh, grinding up. Um, now, this is one of my favorite things, candy apples. Uh, you can make a candy, a hard candy, uh, bringing a sugar syrup to a hard bowl stage, or you can make something that's a little bit more palatable to your teeth, a caramel candy. Now look at that, that is covered with uh, ground up or chopped cashews, and that's the caramel. This has mold and sea salt, so that will be very delicious on a small apple. And we have these large apples, and we have to uh, show you how to make the caramel. It's not difficult. You need one and a half cups of sugar in a heavy bottom saucepan. And you need a half a cup, and that's a lot, but it's very important to keep the caramel soft. You need a half a cup of um, corn syrup, light corn syrup, a half a cup of heavy cream, and some how much water into the... Um... The water's actually just for brushing. Oh, I'm only using the water for brushing. Oh, I always, when I make my caramel, I usually use a little bit of um, water. But we're gonna start melting the sugar. I'm gonna add a drop of water to the sugar, just to start the sugar from, um, to melt. Um, and Mabel would like to know, what kind of apples do you prefer for these types of candy apples? Oh, anything that's flavorful. You really want to. I'm putting a little bit of water around the edge, and I don't usually stir my caramel. I just start shaking it over the, the flame. And we will, you can see already that it's starting to melt. It has to get to the right color of caramel. 
This is the perfect consistency, oh yes, for dipping. Uh, and Kendra would like to know, what other ideas do you have to dip the caramel apples in? Oh, well the candy, the, um, the hard ball, hard stage, uh, it's like Keith's it's sugar syrup till a very, very a hard crack on the thermometer. And I'm just trying to get this to warm up a little bit. Um, and you added some food coloring if you want red, or you could just do it a caramel color. Excuse me? What? Oh, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> they want me to mention our sponsor, M&M's, but I'm not ready to mention M&M's yet. That's not what I'm talking about. Landon yet. would like to know, would you ever use chocolate to cover your apple instead of the caramel? You could, but chocolate gets real messy. And it's... Uh, and it melts and it's uh, it's a little bit messy. I'm gonna cover the pot now and let the sugar sugar um, melt nicely. Now, this is our caramel and it got a little bit cool. It has to be, that's the, that's the stage. Oh no, this is coming. This is good, look. This is gonna be perfect. You can bring it here just in case and if you wanna help dip. We can dip together, but we don't want this to spill. And uh, that looks good. And should we start dipping? Yeah, you can dip over here. And once you dip these, how long, Lawrence wants to know, how long will they last? Um, well, you can just keep them like overnight. Don't make them days in advance. If you wrap them, you could probably keep them. But um, I just like to keep them keep them uh, for th that day. I usually make candy apples the morning of. Well, this is just still taking its time. Maybe by the time we end our Facebook Live today, that sugar will be melted. I'm gonna add my corn syrup now, and hopefully it will help the sugar. So how are you doing? Oh, you're just dipping them I'm like that? I'm just dipping it. Oh, these, no. I took so much time to press on but there. Look but look how beautiful. <laughs> these have been dipped in the caramel. Watch this, you dip. And then if you wanna be really finicky, you can then apply all your M&Ms with all the little M's sticking out. I have a suggestion for M&Ms. Print on both sides, please. <laughs> then we can just put them on and we don't have to worry about this. But look how cute. These are milk chocolate M&Ms ready for the Halloween season. And they look so cute like this. Not hard. And, and the kids will love these. I love the little apples. Oh, too. yeah, they're Lady very apples. good. And they're tasty. This is actually a fun project for kids, too. That they oh, very much on. so. Because the caramel isn't actually too hot. Um, to touch. I mean, it's a little warm, but they're not going to get burned as they would with a sugar syrup. But that's so cute. And uh, this is cute too. And, but boy, oh That's boy. how the kids would do yeah, it, right? I know, I know. <laughs> but a little, a little messy. Oh, here, this is going to, this is going to caramelize now. And then we have another beautiful caramel here, ready to dip. Always protect your countertops. This big one, so just put it in here like this. And you can, of course, encrust with M&Ms, my favorite, but you can also just sprinkle with the beautiful Malden sea salt. This is like a crystalline salt. Look how pretty that is. And don't do that over your caramel because, and I'm using a, a sill pad, one of these wonderful non-stick silicone pads that you should all have in your kitchens for uh, making candies and doing things like like uh, this. Now I'm going to put this around just on the edge of my caramel. So beautiful. Victoria was asking, how do you keep caramel on the apple? It usually slides, slides off when she does it. Oh, well that's, well use my recipe, okay? Make sure you have the cream, the caro syrup, and bring it to the hard bowl stage, caramelized. Look, it's just getting to be the right color now. Can you see? Look, it's getting to be caramel color. A little darker. And by adding the cream when it's the right color, you do not, um, uh, you cool it off enough so it doesn't turn darker and darker. It can turn black if you let it go too long. And then 
to clean it up if it does get to that black stage. I was making creme caramel the other day uh, for a big Mexican fiesta I had at my house, and um, one of the one of the molds turned black. I just put it in the sink uh, on a pad and ran cold water, and it dissolves all the sugar. So it's not a total disaster. But um, yeah, this is turning a very nice color. But I want a little bit darker. Cook, cook, cook. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm oh, going to take you, my time and put some um, cashews on. I'll do a large apple with some cashews. Okay. So here, this one, these are very nice. They, and they, they have to cool off before you can move them. I don't want the salt to get on everything. And the colors of these M&Ms are so pretty, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. I like these colors. These are unusual. Yellow, brown, rust, red. Okay, this is no, still not quite dark enough. Melissa would like to know, would you use any other type of fruit for a dipping? Well, you could use pears, but you have to have a hard fruit um, because you um, would, as a peach would just fall apart. <laughs> And it wouldn't it wouldn't caramelize um, correctly. It wouldn't it wouldn't it, you need that nice skin of the apple. So now I'm going to pour my cream in and stir at the same time. Be very careful when you're dealing with this stuff. It could erupt over the pan, and uh, you just don't want to get burned with this kind of very very hot liquid. And you put yours in a bowl. The early ones that you, yeah. because well, so this is going to make a lighter colored apple. Oh, I like this one. Charisse was asking, should they be refrigerated? Are they okay to sit out? I think it's better to let them sit out than put them in the fridge. They'll get wet in the fridge and they'll slide off. Right? Yes, unless you're under the hot studio lights. In that case, <laughs> <laughs> they maybe would have done so, better in the fridge. Any other questions? Oh. Do you sell special types of sticks, or what type of sticks are you using? Uh, well, you can buy sticks in the craft store. Um, you can use twigs in my picture here, if I can get the picture, come and avoid the caramel. But look, I used a real twig, and I think those look really beautiful. But um, this is, this is I like this color. Hmm, I'm going to try this one. And Anne was asking, can you make the sauce without a thermometer? Yes, because you just cook the caramel, the syrup, until it gets to be the right color, and uh, and, it'll, and when it's that when it's turning brown, it will see. This is a lighter color. This has to cool off a bit before it will coat the apple. So, have patience. Oh, but that's pretty color. See, mm, I love this. Beautiful. And this could be put, oh, I like that. I like it when it gets that on the bottom, see? Then you have something to really bait off. Kids like that, too. I'm going to just pick up the rest of the salt here. Oh, Danny wants to know, what's the best way to clean up the sticky pots when finished making the caramel? Water, water, water. And if it's not coming out of the pot, just put water in the pot and turn on the heat and let it boil. All the sugar will dissolve. It really does. So we can, oh, we've done a lot. And uh, don't forget, I think the, the favorite for everybody is the M&M &M encrusted. This is the, this is the prototype right here. You want your apples to look this good. Mmm. What do you think, M&Ms? <laughs> I think those are really pretty. It's a beautiful harvest color for a fall harvest party. It's fabulous. So over here we have a whole, oh, I want to show you the other um, Indian corn that I grew. This is more of it. And I'm not kidding, this all came from my garden. Look how beautiful that one is. And the red, of course, you saw that already. Here's a brown and yellow. Here's a more blue one. And sometimes you can get all blue. Oh, this is a cute one too, this little baby one. That's really pretty. This looks like just wonderful gems. Nature is fantastic. So we have a couple of good ideas for the, trick or tr for the tr uh, tricksters that come to your door. Um, one thing I love to do is, now this is the more common thing I do, is I package from the big packages like this. This is, how many ounces is this? 11.4, no, 11.4 ounces. 
a bag like that I will package in small little individual cellophane bags. Not plastic bags, please use cellophane. You can see what's inside so much nicer and it feels so good and crinkly. Um, we have a punch like this in our craft line, which is a maple leaf punch. And this is what comes out of tissue. Look how pretty all these different uh, maple leaves. You could use real leaves, but if you get an artificial pumpkin like this, uh, you can uh, cut off the top. And with decoupage, and this is our beautiful Martha Stewart Crafts decoupage available at Michael's. And this has a matte finish. Uh, you can apply all over your pumpkin some of these maple leaves. So you just pick it up like that and put it on and coat it. Of course they have to dry, but this is so easy to do. And you can really, oops, one at a time, you can really embellish these uh, funkins. They're called funkins. And you can buy these in the craft stores too. Um, and I want a brown one. Here it is. Look how pretty. How long does it take to dry? Oh, an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, not, not long. It's very, very easy to decoupage. And look how quickly you can cover an entire funkin. We have one already done over here. And I used a little bit of washi tape. You know this Japanese tape. Again, we have wonderful colors of washi tape. And you just put this all along the cut edge of the top and the bottom so you don't see that style. But that's what this is made out of. Um, and this one's all done, and I found a bowl that fits right inside. And just fill with more of those delicious M&Ms, milk chocolate M&Ms. Oh, they're so good. The only trouble with M&Ms is they're so addictive. You want to eat them and eat them. That's why these are so perfect. It's the perfect they size. They are. They are. Yeah. And kids can come and take a handful too, and put it in their trick or treat bag. But I, I like, um, I like either either way. This is nice to have in your house, um, just in a convenient place where people walk by. Look how pretty that is, and then you can have a little peek. You kind of really use this with a, a real pumpkin because it wouldn't last. Uh, well, you could do a real pumpkin, of course, but that's only for Halloween day. Um, but this. Uh, and then you know once it dries in again decoupage again with the with the wonderful decoupage medium because oh here's an, an oak leaf oh look how pretty that is i could do this forever it's mesmerizing and what would you say the best way to cut these leaves oh no sorry to cut the the pumpkin or the oh the best pumpkin. way oh with a with a craft knife yeah you have a have a martha stewart craft knife our tools are second to none. They are the best craft tools anywhere. And you have to have your whole set. It's just as important as having the best electric drill to have good craft tools. Sharpest scissors, look how pretty these scissors are. Fantastic. So that's very easy. And one last kind of interesting craft project that I can show you is, is this one. Now, we have lots of stencils, but you can also cut stencil paper with one of our, one of our uh, wonderful punches. But this is a, a, a stencil that we make. Uh, take a jar, a pretty jar. We're going to fill these with our M&Ms too. And you can just, with masking tape, put your stencil on the jar in whichever direction you want. Don't cover the stencil. And then with your special stencil paint, which is really our craft paint, all-purpose craft paint, this is a multi-surface satin paint and it comes in amazing colors. Put a little bit in a dish. This is called a pouncer because you pounce like that. See? Not too much. You don't need too much paint. 
and then just stencil like this, staying right on the stencil. It's e important to have that stencil taped down so it doesn't move in any way. And how long does this take to dry approximately? Oh, it dries very quickly, an hour or so. But um, you might want to do it again if you want a really opaque design. But this is pretty good. Mm. See? And then it will look, there's an orange leaf, and another beautiful, oh, acorns. That's a pretty one. And then this one, which should be, you shouldn't take it off right away, but I will do it because I'm impatient. And I want you to see how pretty it is. I think it worked. Would you sprinkle glitter on those? Oh, you could, of course. But you could also use a glitter paint. Now look how nice. And then again, take your delicious milk chocolate M&Ms. And I love milk chocolate, they're my favorite. Cellophane bags with nice little look. Those are can also be used as place mats, uh, place cards. So the names are right on here, so every guest knows, you know, Oliver knows where to sit. Billy knows where to sit. There is a Truman. A Jude and Truman. Oh, Jude and Truman. Oh, guess what? I'm taking those. <laughs> Jude and Truman grandchildren. Sam seems who's Oliver? Agnes' my son. Oh, oh, Agnes' yeah. son, Oliver. Oh, okay, you, you have to have that. That's it, how easy is that? All beautiful ideas that you can easily, easily make at home with very little effort, but they look like you took a lot of care. And don't forget the M&Ms for Halloween, a safe and delicious treat for the kids and you.